we want God to use us. And what that means is that I'm putting myself to the cross and I'm dying to my flesh, right? Persecution's gonna come, rejection's gonna come, backstabbing, all that's gonna come. But he said, I need you to identify with me. So continue putting yourself to the cross, going to his feet, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, and he will download you every step in the house of the universe. So I just want to leave that with you guys. So be blessed, get into the word, communion with the Holy Spirit, and trust God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Baby, drop something to me. Praise God. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome, Facebook Live, to those who are tuning in. Uh, haven't seen some of your faces. Want to make sure everybody's good here. Praise God. God is good. Glad you pressed your way in. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. I'm like, I've been there. I've been there. I work 12 hour shifts. I get off, man. I used to call, call my pastor. Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to make it here. Just like, hey, well, we would love to have you because you hurry up and press your way through. And I'll just make a way. I said, well, God, I'll make my pass straight. And I come in anyway. That's how you do it. And when you do that often enough, Satan going to leave you alone. Watch this for a season. <laughs> for a season. And then he's going to revisit you again to see if you're really serious about your walk with God. See, God knows everything. That's what I'm saying. God's going to reward you. He's watching. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows what you're thinking. He knows your anxiety. So he's going to reward you, those who diligently seek after him. So when you press through like that after a long, hard day to make it in, you will be rewarded. Wow. He's not all night like when I see all those people who are, because you know, I stay by the football stadium, and I see people coming three or four hours early just for the game. In the hot sun, just to be entertained, the flesh, but nothing for their spirit, soul, and their body. Later on, they had to go drink. They already started drinking, and they had to go see a psychiatrist. Why? Because they decided to shipwreck their body by not investing in themselves. Like God says, make sure that you always seek the Lord. Amen. Is that the right light on? I think. Can y'all see that? I think one of the lights supposed to be turned. Let me see. Turn one on. Let me see if you got the right light. Go ahead and try one. All right, turn that one off, reverse it. There you go, that's it. There you go, we look better now. I want you guys to be able to see the words. Well, welcome aboard. We're still praying for Carly. What's this, seventh week? This is so sad, and it hurts me. Every time I go to prayer at night, this is the first thing I think about is she's still missing. Not a clue, not a word, no nothing. And, and she's not the only one, but... She's the one dear to her heart because we have a loved one here that's actually close to her, a cousin. But at the same time, across the world, this is happening all the time. And Satan is really uh, uh, doing a lot of things to our youthfulness. We want to pray over them. Our prayer, uh, God says the prayer of a righteous man of it much, so don't forget that. Don't think your prayers are not working. Because in the spirit realm, a lot of stuff is going on. Remember I talked about last week, if God just let you take a quick peek inside the invisible realm for a minute and see what's going on, it probably freak you out of all the battles that's going on. And the prayers of the saints are actually bombarding some of this stuff that's going on. So even though that happened, think about the ones that your prayers resisted from happening. So that's why we're always thankful. God says always be thankful. We'd be thankful. You know, so keep her in prayer. Uh, we want God to unveil where she at. We decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Unveil it. Show up, Lord. Show up. In that name. the name of prayer, man. Now, I constantly put this up here because I want to tell you, man, we are struggling there. Not just us, but... The church as a whole, when I talk, I talk about the condition of the body of Christ because we are a group of people who are a part of the whole body of Christ. But the church really uh, struggled with the body of Christ assembling ourselves. That's why here we try to make sure maybe you don't know, maybe you're ignorant, you don't know why God set that in place. Because most people think it's an option. It's almost like saying it's an option for you to buy a car but not put that gasoline in it. You have a car but ain't no gasoline, will it work? Well, no. See, ain't nothing happening in the spirit realm because you'll find out later on, we talk about tonight about spiritual maturity, that you're not getting credit for everything. You're only getting credit for the things that God has put you on the planet to do. And that's what people don't understand. Like, oh, I'm just doing something. Like, God, I want you just doing something. Jesus came down as your example and says, I only do what my Father tells me to do. You know, so we don't just make up stuff and do it. You're sitting down here for a reason. During this time, during this uh, time period, with so much uh, time of life that you got, God gave you, the people you're supposed to meet, you got an assignment. We're going to talk a lot more about that next year. I'm really going hardcore about your gifting and about your assignment. Because a lot of people don't realize that 
They're supposed to be operating in their gift and their assignment. And the church has done a bad job of gifting because everything gift they ever talk to people about is a gifting by working like a Levitical priest in the, in the in the body of Christ. And that's not that's why we don't see a lot of millionaires. So like you're not gonna get no millionaire working in the church. You got a gift that probably bring you billions outside that door. You know, you're not supposed to be looking for a gift with inside the church. Your gift will make way. He's talking about like I heard somebody talking about, because I want to do it now, because, you know, I, got, I make a mean sweet potato pie. I say it right now. <laughs> Praise God. You know, but when you think about it, when you hear the story about Maria Callender, she was working at an old five and diner that was going out of business, and, and they was taking a dive, and she, she was a single mom, and she had, that was the only source of income, and she decided to bring a pie uh, the, one of the last closing days, and they ate up the whole pie. And as they were closing their the second day, they came in, they ordered another side, hey, where's the pie at? She ran home during work hours to make another pie. And the story goes on that she made three and four. And that's where the guy starts selling burgers and starts selling a number of pies and Marie Callender was existing. What happened? Her gift made her way. You see what I'm saying? Can't there's somebody, something you can do that can't nobody else do. And you do it effortlessly. That's what you need to focus on. The problem is Satan will give you other passions. And that's what we think we're supposed to follow. But I'm real passionate about it. That's cool. But your gifting, man, I'm telling you, that's where it's at. You're passionate about a lot of things that you don't have the gifting for. And you want to separate that. Don't get caught up in your passion. Because that will change. Your passion change, don't they? <laughs> hey, man. So, yeah, but your gifting will always be with you, no matter what. And it's effortlessly. And can't nobody fool with you once you're in your gifting. And, and it's something simple. You know, the best fried chicken, you make a baked cake. I'm telling you, this stuff will, you know, I'm talking food right now, but there's other areas in your life that you can do. Y'all must think I'm hungry. I only have one meal today, praise God. I must be talking food. Let me stop that, praise God. But the whole point is that we're going to talk a lot about your gifting and your assignment, which is the main thing. Because Jesus, everybody we read about knew they had an assignment. From Jesus to Paul uh, to Joseph, all these guys knew they had an assignment. And I'm finding that a lot of believers don't realize that you have an assignment. Have you finished your assignment yet? You know, and it's, that's why you started talking about, well, church is an option. How could church be an option when you're supposed to go assemble with other believers to help you with your assignment? You go to school for what? To help you with your what? Your assignment, <laughs> you know? But most people, once they forget that, that's when they start chalking and say, oh, you forgot the purpose. And our church, we're going to focus nothing on but purpose. What's the purpose for going to church? What's the purpose for prayer? What's the purpose for giving? If you forget that, you're going to start thinking it's an option. And like you need to know the purpose. That's why we're going to stick to the regular things about uh, the questions that we give out. Uh, we're going to take quizzes, a lot more quizzes next year, because that's how I started in my house ministry. We used to give quizzes all the time. You need to know why do we do what we do. Because remember, if I said, I went on record and told you guys, we're not going to do nothing traditional. We're only going to do the Word. So when we do the Word, you need to why, why are we doing that word? <clears throat> you know, and how do you apply it? So that's what we got to get to. And it's not fair, right? Because most people are lazy and they don't want to do it. That's why Jesus made things very hard for people who was following him. He's like, if you're not into this and your heart's not into it, if you just eat my flesh and drink my, uh, drink my blood, you have no part of me. He's like, you got to be consumed with this. Jesus, even God says, the kingdom of God that I gave you, he says, you might as well get you a shovel because I, I didn't hit it <laughs> and you need to go dig for it. And that's what we're going to have to do if we really want to see the law. And God has told you, and here's how I am. By the way, guys, I'm up here sitting in the right hand. But hey, if you seek me with your whole heart, then you will find me. So that's the kind of thing that a lot of believers are just totally baffled and lost with because everybody just keeps talking about how much God wants to do for you. I can tell you right now, here's the shock, and he already did it. He's already done it. That's called the grace of God. Didn't I tell you, when was the, the lamb slain? Um, um, when was the lamb slain? Before what? The foundations of the earth. Everything's already done. You know, he, he said, I crave you for good works. When? Before the foundations of the earth. I knew you were in your mother's womb. When? Before the foundations of the earth. <laughs> Everything's already done. So when, when God said, and he made man on the seventh, sixth day, he says, I'm done. Not because he was exhausted, because I'm finished. Basically, he can say the same thing Jesus said when he got on the cross. He's like, it is, and I'm finished. Now, the only person who's working now is supposed to be you and I with the Holy Spirit. That's the only people working right now. We're supposed to be. Now, if we don't do that and still wait for fix it, Jesus, come on, Jesus, you hurt. You lost. 
and you need to come to Bible study. <laughs> because that is not how God operates. The grace of God has already given you everything pertaining to God, in the godliness and righteousness. And if we got to learn how to operate in the system to receive all this, and most people don't understand that even if you were to receive some, you got to use energy to tell your brain to lift your hands to receive the gift, to embrace it, and tell them don't drop it. You know, it's going to take effort for that. And me thinking, oh, I receive it, I believe it, I receive it. I'm like, you didn't put forth no effort to go receive anything. You know, God had told the fishermen to follow me. So we got to mix this stuff with faith, man. I'm already fired up. Y'all better watch me. Y'all better watch Pastor tonight. Ephesians 4, 13, praise God. Now, don't forget this. What's the purpose of the uh, the shepherd? Their responsibility is to equip God's people, you know, to do what? I highlight it. It could be to do what? His work. What's this? Say it with me. His what? His work. His work. I have equipped you to do his work. Not to be religious, not to do programs, not to do busy work, but I'm supposed to equip you to do his work. You mean God got a work for you to do? See? Say assignment. Say assignment. God got assignment. You know? Homework. <laughs> you know? Life work. You are you supposed to be, I supposed to equip you to be able to do that work of God. See? Build up the church, the body of Christ. Yeah, God got some work for you guys to do. You got people to meet, places to go, life to change, inventions, witty ideas, uh, giftings, talents. You got all this stuff you can be doing. And we're gonna draw it out. God said, How can they hear without a claim? That's me. I'm gonna draw it out because the kingdom is already inside. I just gotta draw it out. This will continue. Watch this. Now, when would this ever end? He says, Well, this will continue. How long? Until we all come to such a unity in our faith. Okay, since we're all going to be unified. You know what they look like to me? When I pick up this Bible, it says, Hey, we already know we all believe, right? We all believe this. We all believe the same way. We all believe that all marriages should function the way this said. Children should be raised the way this said. You know, treat each other the way this said. When we become the unity of this, he said, This world is going to continue until we get there. Because a lot of people don't believe that. They don't believe the Word of God. Even though they call themselves believers, which is uh, yeah, funny. And knowledge of God's Son that we will be what? Here's the whole point. You got to get mature. We got to grow up. Why are you going to be mature? Where? In the law, which stands for what? Oh, okay. Owner. You're going to be sure in the owner. Measuring up to the full and complete <laughs> standard of Christ. Uh oh. That's our example. That's a word. You see that? He says you got to be the full, complete standard of Christ. You know what? People, well, I ain't Jesus. That was Jesus. What they got to do with me? See? What that scripture say? This is why you come to church. <laughs> until we all continue, until we get to this standard, the full standard of Christ. That's his goal. That's the mark. That's what God wants you to do. So we got work to do. So well, I don't know why people are blowing it off, but you know. Message to the sheep. God uses men and women for, for his different purposes. Y'all know this. Mm -hmm. God has delegated many of the needs of his people to different ministries. He knows our paramount. One such need that God knows is important is to have a shepherd of a local assembly of believers. That's what we do when we meet on Wednesday night. We are a local assembly of believers. That man is to call the pastor or the preacher or teacher who have you in position. This is God calling. Hebrews 13, 7 says this, obey, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch over your what? I don't watch over your spirit, I watch over your soul. And soul is big, it's vast, it's wide. It's your mind, will, emotions, your intellect, your stability. I'm watching, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You, you okay? You know, it's just like a shepherd. Remember shepherd, keep thinking shepherd and sheep. You know, I got, I got sheep and I see this one acting a little funny. His leg is... He's limping a little bit, you know. My job is to have a ride the staff to help him out, even hook him up sometimes. Hey, get back over here. What are you doing? That's what you do. And God put this stuff in place. It's a system that I had, I've been using. As soon as I found out what God's system is all about, I got with it. As they that must give account. See, I got to give account that they may do it with joy, joy. and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. <laughs> Praise God. Now, Pastor's using a pretty good move, so y'all got to worry about me. I'm pretty good. I try to stay in a pretty good mood all the time. 
You, but, but as far as our specific ministry, we're called for the end time harvest. It's different because it's very different because most people don't want to walk away from that crowd. And God is always calling you from the crowd. He's calling you out. He called his own disciples who have already been faithful. And like, and when, they, when he says the guys left him to fall no more, he looked at them and says, are oh, you going to leave me too? And he tells you in that scripture, he says, the reason why most people don't follow that way because that way is the hard way. But it's the right way. It's hard, but it's right. It's hard, but it's right. All right? It's the hard way. I'm not going to tell you there's a whole bunch of roses and stuff when you get ready to follow God wholeheartedly. Because it, it's difficult. You lose people because they don't want to get with that. You know, you lose people. They don't want to get um, with, but you, with God. You know, but you, you have a choice between you and God or you and them. And you're going to have to choose God every time if you want to go with God. I choose God. You know, so yeah, that's what makes it hard. Um, Jesus is building his church. Watch this, Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. God is building his church. God is building his church. Even though he put leaders in position, it is up to God to build his church. He's building, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. We study Hades, and we know that's a place where, where um, the, the righteous dead go and the unrighteous dead go. Meaning, he says, that even death will not overcome the church. We're not weak. That's why we can go and put our, our Bible beside anybody. You know, you get with some religions, like Jehovah's Witness, they don't, they're like, don't break, we don't use your word, use our Bible only, because they didn't went and mistranslated a whole bunch of stuff that took out just to fit what they want. But uh, Mormons, see, everybody there saying, like, no, here, let's use our Bible. You know, no, nobody, see, that's what God says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I mean, our, God says, my kingdom is so strong that ain't nothing can stand against it. I remember Muslim, you remember back 10 years ago when the guy did a cartoon of Muslim and they had a fit, they're losing the whole world going crazy? Mm -hmm. How weak can your religion be if a man can't make a cartoon? Y'all know this time of year they're going to mock Jesus. Matter of fact, I woke up in the news, they put baby Jesus inside of jail, inside of some bars. You know, did we lose it? Did we break down? Do I, do I unbelieve? They do all kinds of crazy stuff with Jesus. And yet, he says, and the gates of that hell type of acting will not stand against it. And we still going to be here. And we still going to say he good. See what I'm saying? But all these other stuff falling apart. We don't lose over that. God told you. He says he's going to go against everything. It has already has. And it always be, will, will be because it is the real deal. Like I told you, 52 countries are not saying that Bible cannot go into it for a reason. It's not a fairy tale book. They know you bring this book, man, people change. Any other religion, not so much. But you put that, that word out there, people change. First Peter 2 and 5 says this, you also like living stones. See, this is the thing you understand. When I say God's building a church, this is how he refers to you in First Peter. You also like living stones. Why? You like living because you are being built into a spiritual house. To be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Remember I told you everything they did in the Old Testament, naturally we do spiritually. He is telling you, there you are. You are spiritual stones being built. You're the building itself. Remember, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you, you're the, you, got the, you got the building. You are. You are the priest. And guess what you're doing? You're doing spiritual sacrifices. The whole thing that they did in the Old Testament. Everything they did naturally, we do spiritually. See, God, God, that's why God can look at you now and says, I am God. I change not. See, you're like, well, yeah, we don't do all this stuff. You don't do it that way, but you still do it. See, all it is, you're still doing it. You see, he says, you're the temple, you're the priest, and you're doing the spiritual sacrifices. That's exactly what they had. Now you are doing it. So nothing changes. That's why I understand why people get all lost. Like, yeah, God says, I, I don't change. You know, you are changing, but God doesn't change. Watch this. It's time to give praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go into some scripture real quick because I got some stuff I want to talk to you tonight. But let's get give because you must learn God's system because I don't want you guys being broke, busted, disgusted, and thinking that the God is, God is rich. And he only a cattle of a thousand hills and all that stuff. I don't like believers being sick, broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh, because that, remember now, if you are that way, that's not the will of God. There might be many reasons why you're that way, but that's not the will of God. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. 
Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. This is God. This is God in the flesh telling himself, like, this is where my system, these are called um, uh, the kingdom keys. These are nuggets that he drops off. You know, this is the way the Father view and operate. He says, now, if y'all are talking about God, where are you? God, I thought I should be long, uh, further along by now. And he's telling you now, this is where God's going to view you and, med and use his measurements. If you can be trusted with a little, he says, my Father here will let you be trusted with a lot more. So he gave you insight about how the Father uh, talks. Nobody ever did that before. Nobody ever knew that. Jesus came down and said, no, guys, y'all messing up. I gave you some rules. I gave you a book. I gave you the Torah. But y'all just messing my father up altogether. Let me show you how he view life and how he does measurements. For you won't be thinking he's crazy. Watch this. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, now he's telling you, who will trust you with true riches? And the true, true riches where most people don't understand that God is serious about. He says, worldly wealth. This he tells you that's uh, less. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? It's, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other. Mm -hmm. Or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And that's been the biggest thing. <clears throat> um, that's been the biggest thing. we got all kinds of scripture. Jesus talked more about money than he talked about heaven, about salvation, the most thing he talked about was money. Why? Because he knew the kingdom of God's competition in Satan's dark kingdom, that's the system they're going to use is money to try to compete with God. God uses this thing called faith and favor. See, and that's what people, one day, I'll tell you, one day of favor is worth a thousand years of labor. We, and that's what I'm trying to teach you guys how what we were talking about getting in, this, in the, um, not so much the spiritual realm, in the spiritual realm where you have these heavenly places where God has set you. See, he's always pulling you up places where Satan has no access to you. He says, I have set you in heavenly places. Then he tells you, now take your stuff and put it in heavenly places. Why? Satan can't get to it. Because remember, he's a thief. What, what's the first thing he says? We're thieves and robbers. That's where Satan's at. So God says, look here, guys. Once you push your stuff up here, he can't touch you. But if you leave your stuff down here where the thief, who is Satan, and robber, who can rob you of your stuff, he's always going to take your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then and, and people think, like, you you, do, I got the, you you don't understand. I understand people who used to be all, because I, I was young. When I first started hearing this stuff about tithing and giving, I used to be freaking out. I mean, what's this all about? Nobody ever explained it to me the way I explained to you guys over the years. But, you know, all I want to do is be faithful, and I wanted to be blessed, just like they were telling me. You know, and God will bless you if you give. But in my brain, I'm trying to figure out how does this work? Because I'm learning every system, but you didn't teach me this system. How does that work? You know, and then and then later on, God started revealing me and piecing it together. He says, you never came to really sit down and ask me, how does that work? You've been asking other people. So when God showed me the system about, in Hebrews, he says, here man receives your wealth. There God receives your faith. I'm like, wow. I need you. I, I just I just got that, <laughs> you know. I like wow. So he showed me his system. Now he said, "Now go back when you start hearing me talking about storehouses and windows and stuff." He said, "Now put that all together." He says, "That's what I'm talking about. You land up for how do you lay up stuff? Think about it. That's kind of weird. How do I lay up stuff for me in heaven? How do you put stuff in heaven? Matter of fact, you're saying, you know, if I can just go and put stuff in heaven, why don't I just go myself? But God says you can't go because I already brought you here. I already placed you where and." So when you operate, he have you operate from up there, where a king belongs. Mm -hmm. You know, you have refer, you operate from your throne. You, he said, and you're seated at the right hand. What's at the right hand? If Jesus is on the throne, what's at the <coughs> right hand? You are too. You're a king on your throne. That's why he's telling you, and you shall what? Decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. See? You got to start visualizing yourself. Where am I at? First of all, I'm in heavenly places. Second of all, I'm a king and queen. Third of all, since I'm in that position, I get to create things and share come to pass. So you need to learn this stuff. Oh, let me get back to this stuff because I'll preach a whole other message on you guys. <laughs> Matthew 6, 19, 20 says, Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust can destroy, where thieves break in. Who's the thief? Satan. Satan. He's the master thief and the master liar, right? He says, Don't you keep all your stuff down here. Now Satan's going to come just like Job. And remember, God had to have a conversation with Job and who destroyed this stuff and caused fire and starts getting all this stuff was here. And as long as it's here, Satan got access to it. Why do you think Jesus was rebuking the storm in the boat? Who was over the storm? 
He wasn't rebuking his daddy. Satan was. He was rebuking Satan. Yeah. So that's why God telling you, Definitely. guys, fly this stuff in the spiritual realm and quit playing where the thief and Ross can have access to it. He said he can't touch you. That's why I set you in heavenly places where he can touch you. Now go ahead and take your things and put them up there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody who taught me that years ago. Praise God. Hallelujah. But store for yourself <clears throat> treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. He's telling you to do it. He says, but store it up. Where thieves do not break in and steal your stuff. Luke says this. Fear not, little flock. First thing he said, you're not fear. The reason I put that fear down there, because like I said, when I first heard about Tidy, nobody explained the way I did. I was all scared about money. All I think about is loss. When I come about coming on Wednesday night ser service, you might think about losing time. Or, or when I go Sunday morning, I'm losing. You're always thinking loss. It's still a game. And you realize, like, man, you cannot be God-given. He's a king. Hallelujah. When you realize why I say I, we're not going to do Christianity, we do kingdom. Because Christians don't know what to do with the king. And if you know, not you know he's a king, you're like, if you give the king anything, he has to outdo you. See? See, Christians don't know what to do with the king. Oh, no, oh, yeah, he's king, a king, Lord, Lord. What that mean? I don't know. Because you're not operating in the kingdom. See? But Jesus had a kingdom, and that's what we operate in. See? It's, now, watch this. Fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What did he give you? What did he give you? It's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, he gave you your own government. Why? Because everybody knows the government down here we are right now is corrupt. He just gave you your own government. And now he gave you your own financial system right here telling you this is how my financial system works when you get involved in it. Mm -mm -mm. Provide, you say, sell your possessions, give to the needy, provide your, uh, watch this. Now, go oh, check it out. God, this is funny. Look what he's saying. He's saying, give your stuff away. <coughs> give it away. Then watch this. They go buy you some purses and wallets that never go old. What, what, the, what kind of? <laughs> Why? What's that other scripture we read in Malachi? It says, he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and of stuff that you cannot even, you can't receive it all. But he's telling you to get a, a, get a wallet that's never run out. Why? You're never going to be broke. You're never going to run out of resources. Why? Because it's going to be in heavenly places. When you want it, you have access to it. That's the only way me and my wife live our life now. Favor of God. That's why Jesus did. He didn't have nothing running around. He, he knew. No matter what you came up with. That's why he attests those guys. It's his father. All these 10,000 people that follow us out here to hear your message. It's getting dark. Want to send them back where they get something to eat? He said, no, you feed them. Test time. <coughs> you ain't going to sit here and get all this word and not get no test time. It's time for testing. It's time for you to grow. He says, you feed him. Because he had rather told him. like, didn't you see what I was doing? I ain't got no big bag. I ain't pulling nothing around. He told those guys, the other guys around here, not to even uh, give out. Um, he told those other guys, uh, the rich running ruler, not to kind of tote that stuff away. He said, you can't tote that stuff with me. Get that stuff away. And then you have what? Treasures where? Basically, we're going to take the natural stuff, make it disappear, and go in there. And then you can have treasures in heaven where you have access when you need it. Because we're moving. We don't talk nothing with us. We pull it down when we need it. We just pull it down when we need it. We need tax money. No problem. Go fishing. You'll find some tax dollars for you and I. See? Feed it down. What you got? Multiply. Break. Need a donkey? Go get it. Pull it from heaven. When did Jesus have time to go talk to somebody? He didn't. God downloaded somebody already. And when you go somewhere on your assignment, because he's on this assignment, whatever you need, it's going to be there for you. This is why I want Lord you to learn God. this system. Lord it took me years to learn this system. You know, and not depend on the world. I mean, right now, it got something. And I don't want to get all, you know, you guys don't, I, I read a lot of stuff. But I want to, it's not fear. It's just, I'm watching. Because you know, we read the Bible, it says about the end times and the new world order and all this kind of stuff. And Antichrist, all the people want to take over. But they, they found to find a way around how to crash the, crash the market. They're mad because the market's doing very well. So they find someone to sabotage the market. That's why I want all your stuff in that market. I want your stuff in the kingdom of God. Live your treasure in the kingdom of God. Now have your stuff all down here. Now this stuff fall apart. I don't care what the market do. I don't care what the down Jones. I don't care what no kind of Jones. You know, my stuff is not in this system. I'm landing myself in heaven. Amen?
Mm, praise God. We're going to get out of that. I didn't mean to talk that much about it, but God said, let me explain this. Because people don't understand this. Ways to give from FIO Ministries. If you want to give, you can write a check to FIO Ministries. Go to our website and hit the mailing address and send it that way. Also, we can go online at www.fioministries.org and hit I support. Give that way on all mobile devices, iPads, <coughs> and social media. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet. You guys have been doing great by supporting the ministry of far and abroad off. We've got people who don't even come here who saw into our ministry. Praise God for now. And right now, we just want to speak over your seed. We're going to water it. Just like you put any natural seed in the ground, you have to put water. Before we say that, I want to say this to you. Thank you again for <coughs> partnering with uh, me and my wife in the eternal gospel. The work of God is the greatest soul on earth and guarantees an uncommon harvest for divine what? That's what you're after. You're not after more money. You're after favor. You don't want no money. You want favor. That's going to beat it. You know what my favor is? I want a big house, but I ain't got enough money. The guy's like, here. You can have it. Pay it off for free. That's favor. That's how kings do it. You don't need that stuff. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go. As we receive today's offer, we are believing the Lord for checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises, finding money, death fell off, expenses decreased, blessings and increased. Come on, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebate and return. Come on, thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. That I may have more, more than, than enough, enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. I got about 45 minutes. I want to drop some word in your heart. Um, that's really, uh, I think it's going to really help you guys out for the next level. Because like I said, we, everybody right now is focused on Christmas. Praise God. Uh, and But we want to focus more on this last days before we go into the new year about being ready and prepared in a mature way. Does your life show maturity in Christ? This is not um, to make anybody feel bad. It's just to make you ponder and just think about it. Where are you? And you remember, uh, who can remember the first day they got saved, when they got saved? Anybody remember that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the day you got saved, she <laughs> said like that. So you're, the day you got saved, you started off as a baby. Now, I've been watching uh, our, our, our kingdom kids up here grow from day one. I knew them before they was in their belly, in their mother's womb. So it's easy for me to see where they're at. But I cannot see your spirit. You cannot see your spirit. So therefore, we have to judge, where am I? Where's my spirit at? God says I started off as a baby. So where, where is it going? So we're going to get at this tonight and see. My thoughts, as believers in Christ, growing closer to the Lord is one of the most important things in your life. I must specify what I mean by growing close, closer to the Lord. Most people think when they get more information about the Lord, they're growing closer to the Lord. <laughs> no, that's like you knowing one of your Hollywood stars, and somebody says, I know his name. Okay, check. Okay, I know his name and kind of house he's staying in. Okay, check. Well, I know what kind of car he like. Okay, I know his favorite dessert. <laughs> Did you go closer to the star or not? No. You just got more information. Well, in the body of Christ, that's known to happen all the time. All the time. They use the wrong measurement. The kingdom of God has its own measurements. And, uh, and even Jesus used to always drop measurements. People always try to figure out, oh, I just don't know what the Lord wants. And I'm like, who are you talking about? You're not talking about our Heavenly Father, are you? Because he's the last person who wants to keep you in the dark. Now, Satan wants to keep you in the dark. But God says you're a children of light. Walk in the light. So therefore, don't be trying to pretend like you don't know the will of the Father. You don't know what God wants you to do. Now, there's some particulars right there when, when you decide, because you're trying to figure out the desires of your heart, and you're trying to figure out where the desires came from, because your flesh got a lot of desires also. And most people think the desire of the flesh is the same as the spirit. Like, no. God says, test every spirit to make sure you're in the right faith. He says, test that thought you just had. You're just going to go with it. I just, I just, I just got a thought. Yeah, he said, now test it. You're going to have to have a bunch of measurement. How are you going to test that? Because Satan will give you thoughts. As a matter of God says, fiery thoughts. And so he tells you to pull up your shield. He's going to be throwing them at you. You know, so you just can't take every thought and just roll with it. You got to have a measurement after I get that thought. That's why I'll be on you guys like, look here, you know how I'm going to get on you. I'm like, we do the word and the word only. 
Why am I so dogmatic about that? Because when I went to the fall, I went whining and crying about the church is not powerful. They ain't doing it. They don't have this. And then I went to like, how did all these cults start? What happened? They're using some of the Bible, not all the Bible. He says they got off the word. He says every single person who got error always got off the word. And I said, well, God, if you call me back into the ministry, I'm not getting off the word. Ever. So we're going to start with the Alpha and Omega and we're going to end with it. Jesus is the word. All right. In the beginning was a, come on. It's going to have to be in the end, guys. So that's how people make an error. They get off the word. Like, where you get that from? Can you show me that? Can you show me an example? Can you show? No. No, I just feel, I said, oh, don't you know that the Mormons and Jehovah, they all had that same feeling. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad, he had a feeling. He had a word and some feelings. And now they create their own little thing. You don't want to do that. We have to be rightly divided. The word of truth <laughs> and roll with this thing, all right? Yeah. Now watch this. More important than reaching your dreams, this even fulfilling your calling, even everything you're supposed to do in life flows from everything you are in Christ. Yeah. That's a very important statement because you might find out that you call at a very young age. And God says, you know, I'm more than your calling. I'm more concerned about how I mean you, how I mean you doing. Mm -hmm. Are you communion with me? You're coming in, your fellowship, you know, I mean you tight. You know what I'm saying? God wants that relationship with you so bad uh, that he's like, you know what? I called you for something, but I really prefer the relationship over that calling. Come on. See, and that's what you got to stand about God. God's all about one thing, the relationship. Because he can get you any other stuff or any other place he wants you to be, but you have to use your free will to develop that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, watch this. The Bible clearly distinguishes between those who are spiritually mature and immature. Because Paul talks about it. The Bible is full of examples of immaturity of believers that came to Christ throughout the known world. Paul and the apostles wrote to them in letters that make up our New Testament and address some major failures, flaws, and struggles. Right? Says, reading about some of these actually give us hope for our own lives. So it's nothing new that we get off path and that we sometimes miss the mark and these areas are not maturing. And Paul is writing constantly writing letters. And these people was in the Word. And sometimes I was really, I was thrown off because of some of the stuff they was doing because they were moving in gifts and they was moving in the Spirit, but yet they was off the Word. Mm -hmm. And that can throw you. That can throw you. Because cause we coming from a, we coming from an era where we've never seen giftings. And that's really throwing the church off. And we think, and I, once we get gifts, we think we got a relationship. And they don't understand the same thing with the Word. If a heathen spoke the word to one of you and you have faith in the word that he spoke to you it will work for you because the word works all right? That's right so it has nothing to do with all that all right so you got to watch that all right that's why you find a lot of people yeah get in the way of certain things and uh actually uh do stuff and people get caught up that's why god says that's why he says show me a sign he's like no you perverted person you pervert it. He says, if you're looking for a sign to believe this, you're in error. Because in the last days, Satan will have oodles of signs. Oodles. Plenty of them. Right now, when I watch uh, some like uh, stuff like X Factor, I throw it out there, and they got the musicians on there, I like, that's great to mind. Ain't no way how they're doing that. <laughs> you know, they have to have some type of supernatural. This ain't no rabbit in a hat trick. They're doing these things. I'm like, wow. So if I fall for that, and that guy told me, yeah, he was a God. God giving these powers. And I was naive. And watch this. And I get off the word. I fall for it. I don't get off the word. That's, my, that's, that's how I measure that. Because I can get caught up in my feelings and my emotions. And he can even intellectually stimulate me. But uh, hold up. Let me check. Hold, hold. Oh, he said, uh, uh, no. No can't do. <laughs> See? That's the only thing that's going to save you. So I'm all constantly building you about the word of God. Don't, don't get off the word of God. Uh, there's plenty of help for that. Bottom line, you are only mature as the test you endure. You, you have to pass tests. <laughs> it's no joke. I was talking to the pastor today about some of the tests that we all went through. And, it, and people don't understand. And, and some I retook. Uh, it, it, it's the same one. You're supposed to learn a lot of this because they didn't jacked up the, um, the family now. You learn a lot of this in the family. Amen. Because you once was a baby in the family. And then you became an adolescent. And have, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But you learn some of the stuff in the family. But if you skip that in the family, now you got to learn it as an adult. Learn not 
<laughs> like, ugh. Now you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pass some of the same tests that you should have passed as a kid, you gotta pass an adult. And that makes it harder sometimes because it kind of confuses you and it probably confuses the people who are watching you thinking Why that, whoa, not? whoa, you're a grown man, grown woman, and whoa, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Well, it's some test that it wasn't passed when you was a kid. You know, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached to them did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, this is Hebrew was talking about the children of Israel uh, back in the way of the desert. He says, this is why they never got all their possessions and reached the promised land because they got preached the word of hope just like we did, but they did not profit from it because they didn't mix it with faith. All right? So, for we which have believed do enter into rest. See, that's that rest again. You remember the seven day God did what? He what? He rested. It has nothing to do about physical. Remember, he wasn't exhausted. Oh, Jesus was so tired. He said, ooh, Jesus got tired. He had to take a break. No. That ain't what he's talking about here. He's talking about he's finished. He's done. Have you noticed since God said those words, you have not seen him do anything since then? He rested and he sat down and he's done. He's done. He went back made no more animals, no more trees, no more humans. He's making none of that. Why? Because when he done it, he done it perfectly. He says, and each seed produces up its own kind. Each bearing, bearing fruit. Each seed bearing fruit going to produce all time. Humans going to produce humans. Animals going to produce their own animals. You know, so God's done. He never did anything else. And the last words you heard Jesus breathe on her and say, it is finished. You're not going to see him doing anything else. See, I'm telling you guys, when you figure this system out, you're like, whoa. He says, now I'm going to send back another one just like me who's going to do the work in and through you, the Holy Spirit. I put the kingdom of God in each believer. I got the Holy Spirit who comes alongside you. And now he's going to lead and guide you into all truth just like I did when I was in my human body. And you're going to do the work. Matter of fact, the works you're going to do, they're going to be even greater than mine. See, not all that wimpy stuff without all that means is going to be more of us than him. No. No, Elijah did some stuff even better than that. I don't know, somebody's trying to get in touch with me. <laughs> but now is not the time. <laughs> Let me turn this down. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all hear that echo, huh? There you go. Somebody trying to get in touch with me. Praise God. Not the time. I'm like, boy, this better be important. You interrupted me three times. <laughs> Praise God. We know it is ready because of one of uh, the place in the scripture where it mentions the seventh day on the seventh day God rested for all his work. All his work. How much work did he rest from? All. Oh. So when I'm crying out to the father trying to make my daddy and your father look bad, I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. What are you talking about? You don't want to cry to daddy about anything. When you pray, you're not begging. Amen. Jesus teach me to pray. When you pray, say, Our Father who is in heaven, holy is thy name. Reminding you who you're talking to, where his location is, you know, uh, how much power he got in his name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He's telling you to decree this. This is basically like a decree prayer. It's not so much a begging prayer because it's already done. You know, the grace of God has given you everything. So when you pray, you're praying to have it released. Not will you, will you, Lord, let the kingdom come down, oh God, will you please? No, you're not praying that. You pray, he says, like, Daddy, can I have something to eat? No problem. That's what you're doing when you pray. You know, but that's the only way you're going to get it. You have not because you, that's the only way you're going to get it. It's not automatic. It's not automatic. It's always a release of a faith, you know, and you got to release your faith. So, and most people like, when you, even kids, when they get older, God wants you to grow up. You know, eventually you're going to stop asking and you're going to decree it yourself. You know, you're going to grow up. Mm -hmm. We know it's ready because he has done all his work. Now watch, God has rested from all his work. That's a powerful statement. So what are we talking to God about? If he's, you say, he, I rested from all my work. I'm done. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter into my rest. Now see, that's a rest. How that means rest. It never means lazy because the Bible is full of stuff about you. Lazy, sluggard, check out the ant. God don't believe in nobody lazy. A man don't work. He don't eat. So it's never that. It's not, I'll just sit still and just wait on the Lord. No, no. Never, ever in the kingdom. The kingdom is always on the move. 
It starts off as a, as, a, as a seed, then it starts off as a bush, it starts off as a tree, ends up in a mountain, it's on the move. You know, so it's, it's like yeast, it's going to go on, it's going to take up the whole dough. It's on the move. That's the kingdom. All right? But watch this. That, he says, they shall not enter into my rest. He's talking about since they didn't believe, these guys are going to forever be doing and laboring for themselves. They're going to have to work for it. They don't know how to enter into my rest. They don't understand about how I told them to lay up treasures for themselves where you don't have to keep laboring and worry about this stuff. Give to me. Give you. That's why we sing this. Like, give my life. I give my life to holy God. He's going to do a lot better with my life than I am. Same thing. Give you money. He's going to do a lot better with it than you can. You know? So I'm telling you guys, you have to learn this system. He says, and if you don't do that, you don't give your life. You don't give your money. You don't give your soul. You don't give your emotions. Guess what? They're never going to enter into my rest. They're never going to enter into my rest. You would drive yourself crazy in the Lord. I have seen it. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to have. That's why when you read scriptures that tell you that you're supposed to be in perfect peace. And you're supposed to, you get mad. They don't understand. They don't understand. You know, you're not supposed to be broke, but disgusted. You don't understand. Everybody got no money. You're not supposed to be sick. You get mad. You get mad at the scriptures because you have entered this rest. You find out why. You have entered this rest. I'm telling you guys, I dug hard to find out. I already asked the questions mm -hmm. for you. For you can learn the system. He says, I have a system. Jesus Christ used the system. They're not using my system. They made up this little thing called Christianity, and all they do is focus on the cross and him crucified. And one day he's going to get me out of here. God, where you at? Can you say I'm hurting? He said, they made that up. That's not in the Bible. Jesus never preached that. He preached the kingdom of God and how you operate it. And we got to learn it. That's why my health going to come from. That's where all my finances going to come. It's going to come through the system. That we're going to learn to work and work the word. But it's all connected to the word. See, in Christianity, you have to use the word. You can get rid of it. Yeah. See, the kingdom is all word. That's why people don't like it. Dang it, if I get to the kingdom, I got to stick to the, I got to stick to the word. <laughs> you know, after stuff these people are doing, they're calling to God, the step of Jesus Christ on top of it. You don't need God for none of it. I've told you for 400 years, from the New Testament or uh, Old Testament, it was solid, God didn't speak to no one, and they had a big building, expensive looking religion, robes, structure, singing, dancing, not no word from God. You can do all that. You can do all that. But when Jesus brought his kingdom, says, guys, all that stuff got to go. I got a new system called the kingdom of God. They're like, well, we, we like our stained glass windows. We like our singing. We, we like, they didn't want to give it up. They were mad. Even the disciples were caught up in that stuff when they come taking Jesus on a tour of the temple. I call it a tour of the temple. They're going to take him up. Look, Jesus, isn't it wonderful? Look at this. Isn't it magnificent? And it was one of the seven magnificent things of the world back then. It was just gold, lay everything. Like a you know, real Caesar Palace, not the fake one they got in Vegas. All right? But it was laid. It was something to see. And Jesus all calm, looked at him and says, guys, not one stone is going to be laid up on itself. Mm -hmm. When my God get ready, I didn't tell you, this system has to go. <laughs> I'm bringing a new one, a much better one. You know, the old one, it killed you. You had to give. The new one, you just not curse. If you want to be blessed, you have to give. But the new one, you're not cursing. You just won't be blessed. But that old one, you had to. That's why the relationship was whack. That's why they didn't understand God. That's why they didn't understand what he said. How are you going to call me your father? He's somebody to be feared. Because if I didn't give that stuff, I did this and did that, man, all kind of hell break loose in my life. That's the only God they knew. Because they're under their covenant. And I taught you about what kind of covenant we're under. And God had to do it that way. Because they agreed to it. <laughs> you know, years ago. Mm, let me go. Praise God. Hebrews 4 and 6 says, So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. Did what? They failed to hear it. They failed to enter to God's rest because they disobeyed God. And we know better. We do some of the same stuff, but we have to learn it. A lot of people, they do it out of ignorance. My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming in and trying to teach you 
I'm going to teach you this stuff, man, because I had to get, dig deep to get around. I had to do all my little religious stuff that I learned out the way and stay kingdom, stay kingdom, stay kingdom. Because people talk to me, but they ain't talking kingdom. They're talking the Bible. But when you don't bring the Bible into where it belongs, where you drop this book written by a king for, for kings of kings and drop it in the kingdom, it has no power. The kingdom of God is about power and what? Demonstration. So when you talk to me, say, a lot of people they talk the Bible, but they won't talk kingdom. Then they start talking all this stuff. Like, what are you, okay, what are you doing? Hey, what, what, what? It's not practical. You don't know what to do it. It's just for a warm for the filler for a minute. Then it fades away. Then you go home frustrated. Uh -huh. Then you start looking like, I don't want to go to church. Then it's bored. This stuff don't work. I've already been there, done that. Know how that feels. But when you start doing the kingdom, it's exciting. Yes. It's exciting. Me and my wife had our anniversary today. Not to brag or boast, but when we go places, we don't ask for anything. And it shows up. We went to a place and said, hey, we have reservations. Like, we don't see anything. I said, well, we called twice. We didn't act a fool. We didn't send us. So, okay, well, if you could just find us a table. It's jam-packed in this place. These people say, hey, hold on. We'll get you a spot. You know what they did? They found the best room in the place. Yeah. Put us in there. Look. They put lights and candles. I put it on Facebook. And so I said, look, I said, God, it's good. I said, put candles all over the place. Champagne free. On the house. <laughs> you know, we sitting in there. So everybody who's walking to go to the other rooms, the commoners, just playing. <laughs> they saying, who are those people? What are they doing? I, I miss my wife. I said, baby, they think we're from Zimbabwe or something. <laughs> <laughs> but we are kings. And we are queens. <laughs> just messing with it. And when we came out, you know, because they had a buffet line and you also, it's a, it's a buffet and you order, you know, entrees also. We came out, people were just cheering, you know, uh, telling us, oh, congratulations. We heard that's your, it's your anniversary. God doing stuff like that. That's the kind of exciting life. I don't ever want you guys to get bored. Don't get bored of doing well doing. Keep seeking. I've been doing this for years and years and years. And yes, sometimes it don't look like you're doing nothing, but you are. You are. You just one month for your breakthrough. Keep going. Fight for it. Say it's going to discourage you and, and tell you, this don't matter if I do that. Yes, it does. You're doing stuff in the spirit realm that's going to just light up your future right now. And that's why you have to fight so hard to do something as simple as come to a Wednesday night Bible study. I've been there. I know what it does. I, I refuse. I'm a soldier. I fight for this. I did the same thing. I'm going to tell you, you know, my, my wife, I love her so much because I put her through a lot when I say we're going to be God 110%. We're on our way to church. 110. Our car breaks down. You know, most people freak out. Oh, you know what I did? Mm -mm. Left it on the side of the road. Let's go. Let's go. I know. <laughs> I know that's right. See, you ain't going to sit there and shake me up. Amen. We're going to church. We'll deal with this later. It'll be here later. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, most people are here for all, oh, anything yes. to make you forget God. Like, are you crazy? If you can't run with the footman, how you thinking around the horseman? horseman? Come on. You got to learn to fight this thing. Come on now. Satan heard you when you say, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to go and I'm going to do this and I'm going to sow. And the next thing you know, something's going to break in your house and you're going to be able to take ties. Been there. You better fight. You got to pass that test. You don't pass it then, you got to pass it later. You pick and choose. Go and pass the test. But now. I'm trying to tell you some of his tactics for when you go through this stuff, you're like, there ain't nothing but the enemy. He heard me decree something, and now he's going against it. That's all he's going to do. When you say something, remember, Jesus, I never leave you, forget you. What? Now it's going to be a test. Now it's going to be a test. See? That's all that's going to happen. You got to learn to fight for that. And most people, I'm telling you, man, we just hear people say, for real? That's all that stopped you? Oh. You're going to forever be a baby. Because until you pass tests like that, you won't go to the next level in God. You know, He's still gonna love you. You still gonna be in the kingdom. You still going to heaven. But you don't want to be like, how come I'm? How come? And how come I'm like you ain't passing the test? You know, I mean, I, you know, not to put our stuff out there. Me and my wife been through so much. It didn't phase it. We always served. I can go. I, I served on four major pastors in the valley. I can go to each one of them there. Take me back in a heartbeat. Why? One hundred ten percent faith. 100% always loyal. 110% always there. What you need? Whatever you want. I don't care what I did. I was a greeter in one, singer in another, system passing. Didn't care. 
That has nothing to do with my assignment. Joseph went to jail, palace, pit. He had to learn to pass the test. That's right. You got to learn to pass the test. That's all it is. Test taking time. Next week, week, next year, we're going to talk about these tests. You got to pass them. I didn't go through all that hell and hot water for you guys not to know how to do this. That's why I did it. Papa already did it for you. All right? I didn't figure the system out. I didn't went through some things so I can tell you, hey, be on the lookout for that. He's going to hit you with this. Be on the lookout for that. He's going to hit you with that. I've been through it. Remember my wife? I'm telling you how serious it is. We um, lost a child, and, uh, and we're in the hospital, and some of the pastors came that we served for. It wasn't a, you know, a week next Sunday. We sitting up there at our station, and they're like, will you? You okay, y'all? You need something? Like, we're good, Pastor. We're moving on. We're moving on where we got. See? That's what... You got to have fortitude. Jesus, are you willing to drink from the cup that I drunk from? Oh, yeah, I do it, Lord. You say, okay, you shall. See? You got to be willing to pass tests. This is all about, about growing and maturing in the Lord. You have to have some fortitude about yourself. And you got to be able to do the simple task and make a commitment to God. God, this is the day I'm going to serve you. God, this is what I'm going to give my 10%. God, we did that stuff. I already know how it works. Satan going to come at you. Make the finances feel fine. Next thing you know, you get ready to come on Wednesday. Everything going to fall apart. Or whatever day we decide to serve. It don't matter. We tried it. Let's do Tuesday night. Be better for the people. They still going to show up. Let's do Wednesday night. It don't matter why. Satan says whatever night you decree is the night that I'm going to get their little weak mind. People, oh, I, I've got a birthday party. Really? I have one too. <laughs> you know? And it's not for me. It's for you. I passed that. You got to learn. You'll never pass that. I mean, you, I'm tired of it's, it's just ridiculous. You don't know how the system works. And once God put me on the side and told me everything that we was not doing right, I realized, oh, my God, because I was ready to just whine my little God. It ain't fair. And this ain't happening. And how come the church is like that? And you say we do great work. And we're saying that. And he, not turning, he showed me all the word that we was not doing. We were disobedient children. That's all we were. I'm like, wow, we disobey. Ain't nobody doing the Lord what the Lord told us to do. We do our own thing. And say, now come on here and bless it. Come on here and bless it, Lord. No. God says you're going to do his work, not your own work. I am the Lord God God. I change not. I'm forever watching over my what? To perform it. The word of the new covenant, that's the only word he's watching over. So I can't make or manipulate God. He ain't going to fall for my little weak mind games that I put with humans. Make people feel sorry and sad for me. Make me look like I'm holy. And oh, y'all, you know, you know I'm serving and all that. And in the background, I'm just as disobedient. He can see all that mess. Yes. You can't do that with God. You can do it with me. But you can't do it with God. And you won't grow. So you just have to get real, as they say. Keep it real. You better keep it real with God because he sees all, know all, know your thoughts are far off. I can't play games with God. And you can't either. And I want you to grow. And he will elevate you. And it's going to be silly. He's going to blow your mind for the stuff that he had planned for you when you get in line. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so God's, so here we are. When God says, you before says, so God's rest is there for people to enter, but those who first heard it did not because they disobey God. That's the same thing that happened to us. Why do I hate, why do I have to mature? Watch this. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And you are heirs according to the promise. That's in Genesis 15, where God promised Abraham that your descendants will also be blessed. Mm -hmm. All right, so you are Abraham's seed. If you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed, so you are blessed. Meaning you empower, you empowered, endowed uh, with power. The favor of God is already on your life. You got to walk it out. Watch this. Galatians 4 1. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different than the slave, though he own everything. See, that's us. So when I say, so it messes with people's minds, say, God has every you everything. Like, where's it at? Where's it at? He said, You own it all. He says, But you're a child. If you're a child, you cannot receive it. You don't give your kid, you don't give your kid the call to your. To your car, your brand new Lamborghini, you know, you got it, you got one away anyway. Your Bentley. <laughs> you look, look to your, here you go. Why you don't give it to it? They can't handle it. They can kill themselves. Amen. That's the same thing happened to you. 
If you're a baby and God gives you more favor, more influence, more money, what do God says about money? He says money ruined a what? A fool. But the righteous, he does great things with it. He says, but I give, I give money to a fool, he'll ruin himself. He'll ruin himself. See, that's why you have to grow. Most people say, I got all this stuff I'm going to God. Like, can you handle it? Can you stand to be that blessed? Could you stand to be that billionaire that they won from the lotto? All that money? Man, people win that stuff, man. The last thing they think about is, I ain't got time to go to church. I ain't got time to go serve the Lord. I ain't got time. Well, I'm talking about to play with my toys. Material wealth. Distraction. You can't stand to him. You got to. God only going to give that stuff. It's, it says Solomon was the richest man ever in the Bible. And that dude, they said that dude gave over a three point something million dollar offering at one time. Back then, you know, that's money. <laughs> that's equivalent to billions of dollars today. You know, so that's unheard of. That lets you know that money doesn't have him. He says, you're my favor. You're my source. You're my El Shaddai. And God says, boy, somebody got it. See, when somebody taps into what God really wants, oh, he gets excited. What You see what he did? The person Jesus got most excited about in the whole Bible, the whole time he died, he got excited about a secular, you know, centurion. Why? He got it. He got it. I'm the same way. When I see somebody get it, I get excited for them. You got a revelation. You got a revelation about that. When you get it, God's system, we got grown men around here that, that don't even understand the kingdom of God. Don't even know they're supposed to be in one. I mean that he's talking about you being heirs. You cannot receive the things if you're a child. And even though God has already graciously, by his grace, already given you everything. He is subject to the guardians and trustees until the date that is set by his father. Look at there. Mm -hmm. I told you, you cannot pretend that you don't know what God is doing or not doing. Because he's always going to give you a natural example of something that you're going to do in the spirit realm. He's always going to show you, like, it's just like this, guys. I give you kids to show you how you grow, how you act, how I respond to you. You have every example. I, if you decide to get married, he says you understand how the church and our relationship are. He's going to constantly give you examples. But yet, I get these people around to pretend like, I don't know, I really don't know about what's, what's, what's what I'm supposed to be doing. What you mean? You got examples. You got the word of God. You got the Holy Spirit. You got pastors. You got a school of ministry, you know, that God put in place. There's no reason to be ignorant. You've been ignorant on purpose. Not about the things of God. It's been given unto you to know the what? The hidden secret, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but not to those who don't come and seek it out. And if you're ignorant because you're not seeking. That's how I learned every revelation I got. When I read scriptures like that and got a revelation, you mean to tell me I'm the one that's holding back the knowledge and revelation that I'm supposed to be receiving from heaven. The buck stops right here. And that's when I went into God says, if you seek with your whole heart, I said, what does that look like? What does that look like? Because I was already going to church. I was already serving. So I'm thinking, I'm hooking up. Nah, nah, you, that's the beginning stage. Man, the guy said, no, no. No, then he, then he took something that you love the most ever and says, you see how you do that? And you do that, you spend time, treasure, and talent all the time when you do that. He says, that's what I want you to do right there for me. And when I got that, that's when I got it. That's when the revolution came. I would have no other gods before me. Nothing in my life is idle anymore. For God I live, for God I die. He knows it. He knows ain't nothing here to tell me to do this. Get this done. Give up this. Here you go. Why? Because I got a revelation. I know I can get more. I know I can get more. Absolutely. Praise God. He's such a guardian trustees until the day he's set by his father. See, God said the same thing now, guys. Watch this. Now there is store for me a crown in heaven. This is Paul talking. Talking about assignment. This is how you're going to happen when you finish your assignment. Because you have an assignment. Say, I have an assignment. I have assignment. Say, I have an assignment. assignment. Don't forget that. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me. See, a reward is something you work for. A award is something you achieve. See? And that's what you got to do. You got to achieve. When your mission is for, you achieve this award. 
to me on that day, and not only me, but also those who look forward to his appearing. We must grow. Ah, let us be brought into maturity, Hebrews 6 and 1. Every man fully grown in Christ, Colossians 1.28. Now you see God's mindset towards men. I want you to grow up. I want you to grow up. I want you to grow up. I told you, you got born as a newborn babe in Christ. Now I want you to grow up. All right? Watch this. God's will becoming like Jesus. That's his main thing. Lifestyle choices validate our, our faith. God is less interested in our circumstances than our character. Let me say that again. God is less interested in your circumstances than your character. Why I stop there and put emphasis on that? Because God will allow you to go through something if it builds your character. You won't like it, but his priority is your character. He's like, it won't kill you. That's why that song, I will never put on you, then more than you can. You might think, oh, I'm about to die. No. Go through it. All you do is say, God, where you at? He says, I'm right here. Can't you say I'm going to say, yeah, I see it. I told you I'm right here. Because he's going to go through it with you. Because he wants your character to develop. And, that, and that's a promotion. If he's trying to get you to that, he's he on the side. It's a reward. He's going to If he lets you go through it, he'll never let you suffer for nothing. His son didn't suffer for nothing. Look at us. Can't tell that. He didn't suffer for nothing. You ain't going to suffer for nothing. So I want you guys to learn to go. Where, where else we're more interested in our circumstances than our character? How we feel. We don't want to go through nothing. Don't want to go through nothing. First of all, you must establish your faith is in God. It won't be the institution that he gave you. It won't be the pastor that he gave you. You know, it's going to be faith in God. And it's always in the Word because God is the Word of the One. But I want you to have faith in God because when everything else fails you, or you feel like everything's failed you, you still have faith in God. Those guys didn't have these 66 books. They had faith in God. In the Old Testament, Moses and them, they had faith in God. They didn't have no word. Oh, I'm sticking. I'm standing on the word, Lord. They said on the word that God spoke to them, they had faith in God. You know, poor Abraham, that brother man was 75 years old, and God's telling him, you're going to have a child. Now, he dipped a little bit, listened to his wife, told him, hey, well, hey maybe he meant by the handmaid. And God says, no, go get with your wife. Watch the faith. 25 years later. Now, that's from the promise. How about we've been trying since I was up to 75? We got people, man, can't handle two years, two weeks. <laughs> of nothing. And I kept telling you, man, when God told me to study these things, look how long I prepped them, 30 years. Moses, 80. Abraham. 40. You guys don't get it. Why? You have to go from that baby to you can handle the glory that I'm about to put upon you. You can't handle that. You think you can. You let teenager in your mom's house. I'm good. I'm grown. You can't handle that. Put go out there. Do it. Make it happen. And it crushes you. God knows what he's doing. I learned to be quiet a long time ago. I had some good mentors. And I woke up real quick when I was 24 years old. I was like, ooh. Ooh, I'm watching, I'm watching them. They go, oh, wow, really? I can't believe. Ooh, not them. They're faithful, Lord. Had nothing to do with faithfulness. All the brothers were faithful. Daniel, in the lion den. Faithful. Where he at? In that lion den. What are you doing? Passing the test. Get ready for what? Promotion. Promotion. You have to be ready for this stuff. Don't let Satan derail you with all this just childish stuff. When God said, do it, you just do it. If it's hard, give me some more strength to do it. But don't make excuses. Satan trying to take away your promotion. You have to pass the test. There's no way around it. Now the downfall, if you don't pass the test, Remember what they did in the wilderness? You're going to die in the wilderness. And God's going to raise somebody up to finish the assignment that you're supposed to do. What a serious. That's why I don't want to go to heaven without fulfilling my assignment. That's why I can stay focused. I can stay focused because that's all. I got eternity on my mind. I have an assignment. I have a God said in my life. And I want to finish it. 
So you don't let nothing derail that. So you just turn it on in life. Keep moving. Keep moving. Your faith. Your faith is only as strong as the test you survive. We talked about that. Watch this. You never grow in the good times. You never grow in the good times. That's a time to regroup. <laughs> Get ready. You're getting out of the test. Go ahead and prep yourself because you're going to have another one. You should be feeding, eating, meditating, listening for God, you know, wait for your next step. You never grow in the good times. Look, look at Joseph, man. This brother ain't doing anything wrong. You can't find anything he did wrong in the Bible. But look what he did. His brother even used his gift. God, I'm going to use my gift, so I know I ain't going to go to jail. He used his gift, and he's left him in prison for two more years. Why? It has nothing to do with your faith, how good you are. It's just that you have to go to the test. Everybody, Satan loves for you when you're sitting around thinking everything's good and everything's going all right. It's easy to love somebody when they treat you right. You got to go, you got to love people who hate your guts. Been there, done that. Go and serve them. Give them the first plate. With, with joy. <laughs> That's who you know I have grown. That's what you saw said, oh, back in the day. Now I even do that. I outgrown that. See, when I first got out of it, I was right back and you lucky I'll say, I had told it, man. See, that's, that's all out of me now. Ain't no way in the world I put that in my mouth. That's crazy. Matter of fact, when I look and see that guy, I'll be so embarrassed. I seen a tape of me one time when I was young, before I met her. And I see me walking. I'm walking on the beach, shredding. Yeah. Got my shirt off. <laughs> and I literally started crying. I'm like, oh my God. Look at that arrogant guy. And my said, what's wrong? I said, baby, I don't like that. I don't want to be there. I'm telling you guys. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you. It's time to grow. It is time to grow. James 1. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds. God wants you to say, you're going to have all kinds of trials, guys. He says, consider it joy. Why? Because you're going to thank promotion. You're going to thank, if God allowed this to happen, then I'm going to get ready for promotion. God just strengthened me and tell me how to deal with it. But I got to get through this. Don't run from your test. And he will allow you because you have a free will. If you run from your test, all that means it's going to be a retake. It's going to be a retake. And you don't get to pick, oh, I want to take it on that date. No, he's going to pick the date now. You never get to pick the date when you want to take the retest. And you're going to be booking along in life, and you're going to run into a situation, and you're going to go, here I go again. <laughs> Same test, different facing people, whatever. And that's what we most struggle is to how we deal with people who, who treat us. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. When is it going to grow? When it's tested. That's when you're going to grow. you got to be tested. Less perseverance finishes work so that you may be what? you got to be mature. i got to let this happen in order to be mature. i got to go through this perseverance in order to mature. I'm going to have to go through this into mature. I'm sorry. Did you get that? How about Daniel? Talk about Daniel. Your faith doesn't protect you from the test. It takes you to the test. Because you've been so faithful, I'm going to prune you some more. The tree that prunes produces more fruit, I'm going to test you or prune you some more for you can produce more fruit. So you would think the people who are serving the hardest, loving God the most, that all oh, they're exempt. No, God says, I'm going to even promote them even more. They're going to go to another test. Pastor's still going through tests. My wife's still going through tests. Why? Promotion. Promotion. The best is yet to come in our lives. But we have to be ready for the glory of the wind <coughs> that comes along with it. Oh, yeah, to crush us. Just like you're throwing your kids a car that's two years old. God don't want you to fail. He wants you to succeed. So you have to be patient and let them know that God is with me. Therefore, you know, you don't have to worry. He, see, like I said, that's why you can't pretend, what's going on, what's going on? What did God say? What did he say right here? I'm going to take you from what? 
the way to glory. Watch it, the way to glory. See, faith to faith. Remember, my baby, when you first cry, when you first give to God, you get saved, we was like, yeah, go ask God for this. Like, little kid, go ask God for this. And he's just showing you. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I got this, I got this. And the next time you do something like, well, something ain't right. Well, good God, you ain't hearing me. No, no, he's not going to come back to that faith level. Let's go here. We're not going to learn the ABCs. We're going to start writing sentences. <laughs> We're going to start putting some paragraphs together. He's not going to just see you way back here. Yesterday's faith. No, no, no. We're going here. And with that faith level, it only has so much glory. And with that faith level, it only has so much glory. Glory means weight. Weight like you is when you have carpet. If you have carpet or whatever, you put a fungi, a heavy fungi down, it leaves an imprint. That's glory. That's glory. Can you handle the weight? Can you stand to be blessed? See, most people, oh, you know, like you don't understand what you're asking for. You're asking for a test. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what Jesus told you. You do not know what you're asking for. He told him that. You're asking for a test. Anytime you holler promotion, you holler test. Oh, I think I should be doing you ask you want a test. I see. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Let him do it. Let him have his perfect work in you. Yes. I'm going to tell God what he's going to do with me. I'm going to let him deliver, have his perfect way with me. Watch this. This is stuff. This is why your pastor is such a good minister about the kingdom of God because it's so practical. Watch because it's like this. Watch this. It's no pain, no gain in the kingdom. Yes. You want to gain in the kingdom? It's going to be just some pain. <laughs> you know, some suffering. You know, Long suffering, all this kind of stuff, betrayals, people stabbing you in your back, and you still gotta love them. It's easy to say, I'm done with them. Now you can be done with them, but you better love them. Or you're gonna take another test just like that. So that's why it's not easy. That's why I said that road, that's why we try to teach you how we're gonna teach you how how do you get out there on your own like that? I might make it look easy, but trust me, there was a lot of tests before I did that. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. And if you, if you have, a, that's why you have to have this, such a relationship with God to where when people start turning their back on you mm. and betraying you and, mm. you and you did nothing for them to act that way towards you, you got to be rooted in God. Yeah. Not just know about them, know all the words of scripture about them because even the Pharisees can handle that and they were the teachers of the law. But they couldn't love nobody. Come on. You know, but God said, no, the new covenant God is a covenant wow. of love. And it leaves with love first before it leaves with the word that you know. So it's not so much I don't know the word. I just ain't got enough love in my heart to tote that word around. So that's what you're going to have to work on. That's how people are going to know that you've been with the Father. What? By your love. You set your whole body on fire if you want. But if you don't show the love, God says you get zero credit for it. That's what those tests are for. It's to teach you to love. Don't you know Joseph when that guy betrayed him? You know, left him, oh yeah, I, I tell him about you. Left him there for two more years. You know, he had to deal with his heart. I used my gifts and got this guy out of the prison. And he went and got promoted. Left me in this dungeon. So what God was working on, Joseph was like, okay, now when you get out, when you get in charge, how are you going to treat somebody that do act that way? See, most people are like, I'm in charge now. I got you. You got to come to me. You got to come to me. I told you I've been in that situation. I had somebody do me like that, and I got promoted, and they had to come to me. I went through it like nothing. I went home. Praise God. I said, God, I, can't I went through it. Didn't flaunt it. Didn't say it, pretend it never happened. Didn't fade it. I had grown. And I gave God the glory. Wow. I can do that now? Because the old me, the old me be like, I can remember all that stuff you did to me. You embarrassed me from groups of people. For eons. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in the position to get you back. Oh, my Lord. What God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm telling you guys. Promotion. Testing. This is what God wants from you. Watch this. The way to frame it is like the way to heaven. The way to fame is like the way to heaven through much tribulations. When you read in Hebrews, and we're closing with this. When you read in Hebrews, the hall of faith. What you're reading is a hall of faith, uh, uh, a hall of fame. Is the people who are famous for what? Suffering. All of God suffered. 
but they believe God. And I'm calling you out to believe God tonight. I want you all to believe God tonight. No matter what, out the world's going to get crazier. We are in the last days. Don't look for no presidents, nobody. We believe the word of God and God himself. That's what's going to get you through this. Just with the stuff we read about Daniel and the lion then, that was a crazy world. They're killing good doers like they were real good doers. God shut the mouth of the lions. And God's going to shut the mouth of those lions crying out against you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It is time you, Lord. for us to rise up and stop depending Thank on this you, dark Lord. world system where God gives the kingdom of God which within you. Thank you, Lord. We're about to lay some stuff up. Thank you, Jesus. So the last question I ask you, where are you? Where are you? It's rhetorical. Please don't answer because I'm telling you, let God answer. He won't get you there. We know you started here. And the only way you grow up in the spirit, not like the body does with time, is through testing. What test have you passed? What weight of glory, from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have delivered the word tonight to humble us and let us know that you want us to grow because you want us to go and receive everything that you have given us, Lord, because we are heirs to the promise and you want us to have it all. We just want to thank you, Lord, that you stir stirring up our heart tonight, Lord, that we want to task, pass our tests and understand pain. No pain, no gain, and we know as long as you are with me, Father, that we can all get through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap. Praise.